little crash course. Well, this is the, the more a little bit more complicated hand on the front. Uh, you have two controls at least. You have to control the two winch. So you have to roll on one side, well, lift on one side and go down on the other side. So you have to control that two main winch. And at the same time, you have to keep an eye on the front. You don't have to, well, the front will be following as far as rolling, but you still have to set the proper height on the front. So you have three lines to actually take care of. Lifting the whole thing, keeping everything even, and then roll the whole thing with a two main winch. This one would then keep. Now, like we said, you want to set a certain distance. Even though you trust yourself, it's not just for safety, it's just because you can see, you can better see. Now on the main unit, looks like uh, TB will be going to the honey they don't bother you. controls on the truck, so you want to be able to see him. Make sure you always keep an eye on him. And really it's when you're ready, guys. When you feel comfortable, just do it slowly. We're all good. And don't worry, I will be talking all the time just because I, just because I can't stop. No. <laughs> Yeah, the sound is calling. <laughs> so very important, you need to keep your load even all the time. That's the challenge here, keeping three, three different lifting points even. When it starts to you wiggle around and one end goes higher and here and lower, it's more difficult to keep everything even. Like we said, if you're very good and you do it very carefully, you always want to keep it as close as possible to the ground, just for safety purposes. If anything, it's still recovery. It's not crane lifting, right? It's not a. There's, there was nobody. There was no lifting engineer that said it's exactly here. You got to lift it. It'll be safe with like 10 times safety factor. It's a recovery job. There's some unknown. You don't know exactly if something's gonna move. You never know. You never know if that door will open on the tractor or whatever. <laughs> so. And it will, of course it will start moving a little bit because you're not always properly centered. So that's why you want to go very slowly. And you want to be as close as possible to the ground for safety purposes. But you never want to touch it. Because if it runs on the ground, it puts the side load somewhere in, the, in the, the whole system. And then you're not controlling the whole thing. And if you lift a little bit and start moving sideways, then can be dangerous. So you want to be high enough so nothing touches the ground. Uh, TP, if I remember well, yesterday we boomed down a little bit. So you will probably have to boom up to get a little bit more height. Now you can see how barely it is uh, doing it. Like while TP is actually booming up on this truck, you see that the um, it's pulling a little bit on this one here, and the whole thing moves a little bit backward because this point is going this way. Move it up, we'll actually shift up the load a little bit and put attention this way. You can see also on the front, now we did added some, some more uh, anchor point on the front when we do that because we're rubbing on the front of that vehicle. Because we're really like the, where we hooked up and on the front here very limited we have very limited space and we're just on the front of that trailer so when TP will actually boom up a little bit more that will make the, that will make the whole thing move just like three or four inches back and that will clear the wire rope on the front so that'd be good So if you take, if you're very cautious and then you have proper safety factor, nothing will ever happen. It's really like, uh, it's not that heavy. We have enough safety factor on the main winches, on everything. Like I said, it's still a recovery situation where there's a always a little bit of unknown. So you tie it up probably here, but let's say something happened. It happens sometimes. Uh, the axle for some reason has been more damaged than you thought and actually shift and that creates a shock load on that unit here 
And since you're you're actually rolling it and it let go, then it will spin and roll, right? It's something that will happen. It's been it happened in the past few units doing and roll like that without using that floating block. And since you have you, you're handling the roll on the front, something happens, and the other truck is also turning at the same moment, but it's never e it's never even. It's almost impossible to have two trucks rolling and inducing that roll and being completely even. So if something happens to one truck and there is a kind of a twist or a load on the other one, it will just let go and you have a high risk of overturning a truck or something will happen, move sideways. Using the system here, if something let go on this truck, the other one will just fall over and the truck will stay right upright. So that's a much safer way of doing it. Now we're just tying the cab because the cab was actually going away from that mm -hmm. whole thing. It's still holding, but I mean, yeah. it's... Yeah. Well, little detail. Uh, we did practice that yesterday, and then we climbed on top. Um, that wheel to actually change a little bit of setup and we just noticed that if you look the chain is wrapped below the axle so what will happen if we keep on going at one point the brakes are not set on that axle we'll spin around and do a shock load on it so what we're going to do right now is fix this so like we said we're always learning something and it's always good to actually make mistakes and notice it while you're here and fix it so we can do it the proper way and we'll put everything back on the ground. We'll spin that wheel up half turn so that the, the, the wheel is tied above that axle. So when it comes down, it won't spin around and, and shock load that thing. It's on the top of the wheel, right? Yeah. That's how we did it yesterday, it's just that we spun it after. That's also one thing about using the remote. You can be standing at a distance, you can see everything, and as you go, as you kind of uh, go and look at everything you can notice things like that if, if you're if you have your face in your control against the, uh, the side of your truck you can't see everything you, you, you can miss things like that and then you can get some surprises somewhere So at that point, as soon as when you're going this way, when you're actually upriding it, as soon as you clear on the back here and you start pulling on the other side, then the other side will go up anyway because you're pulling on it. So if you don't let go here, that will have, uh, that will make the whole thing go up a little bit and turn it. So that's how we keep it as close as possible to that ground.
Now you can see well that we're using the tanker. It's, it's narrow and it's small. So we don't have much problem with the 30 CS the way we're rigged right now. But just imagine you have a box truck right there. You can see that as we come up, we don't have enough height to actually clear the whole thing. But then that's where you need a little bit bigger truck like a 40 CS with ideally a three stage boom. That would be very easy. <coughs> Uh, that would be barely possible, if possible, with that 30 CS if it would be a box truck. Now even here, just imagine you have a box truck and a big condo. That's where it becomes, that's where you can get a surprise. You start doing your, uh, you start planning for your uh, end roll. You lift the whole thing and you're thinking, oh, I have enough, enough reach, enough boom height, no problem. Uh, well, don't, don't forget that that unit was eight feet wide when it was on the ground, and if it would be a box truck, it'd be uh, nearly 40 feet high now, so you need more clearance <coughs> to bring the load and turning it. So now that you've seen that it's possible to do it, if you want to try it later on, after we did all the scenarios, this is something that um, the Battle family actually, they will all of you to use their trucks and do that yourself, being supervised with people. It's exactly, well, it's, it's a good time to actually try if you want to try. Uh, it's not something you can try on the side of the road every day. So you have a chance here to actually try it yourself. The more you practice it, the smoother it is. You can actually operate the two winches at the same time and be rolling the whole thing, be even. It requires a little bit of practice, but it can be done. No big deal either if you're not familiar, you can operate one winch at a time as long as you know what to do for it. Now this is one of the challenges with a, with a cab over truck is that the front end is pretty close to that winch. Like, like if you have a World Rome or a bus, same thing. If you would have a regular tractor on the front, you wouldn't have that um, visor and winch problem on the front. But we saved up the winch, so that means we're good. 